recording. And I will also share the screen and um, hang on, actually, it'll, I'll share my email for a second. And uh, so um, I'm going to copy the link of the Miro board that we are using into the chat. And um, so, Um, if anyone hasn't isn't familiar with the Miro board, it is an online collaborative whiteboard. And so everyone should be able to click on that link if you've got the capabilities right now. And you can join us on the Miro board and actually interact with the board. Um, one of the reasons why we're doing this is that uh, we're making we're trying to make it possible for people who can't be at each of the, the Zoom times um, to still have a way of contributing. And so just really quick, if you want to catch up, we have in the upper left-hand corner of the board is basically a description of what we're trying to do together in the process. And there's also a link to a quick three minute video that Miro produces that gives you all the basics about how to move around the board or add a sticky note or edit something. And, um, and we also have been recording these talk tracks which um, allow you, to, you can click on it and it basically gives you a kind of a guided tour. And there's one that gives you the overview of the board and then there's one for each of the three sessions that we're doing. So if you weren't able to join us on Monday, you can come back and um, contribute to that. And, <clears throat> uh, and the process itself is uh, we have three sessions that we're doing, one last Monday, tonight, and then next Monday. And then from that, we're going to be generating what we're calling requests for proposals that will go out to our functional area guilds so that we can divide and conquer in, um, in a good way. And uh, so that people can be forming into the, the groups that are working on the aspects that you are most interested in and um, to develop some action plans for 2024. And then at the charrette, which is going to be both in person and on Zoom on the weekend, the long long weekend, Friday to Sunday of February 16th through the 18th. So uh, what we're doing now is we're gathering together all the raw materials um, that allow us to put together action plans that we'll then review in February and we'll weed those plans together and uh, figure out who's gonna do what. And so that's the, the high level plan. And uh, on Monday, I just want to uh, call anybody who wasn't there. Um, this is what we did on Monday. We went over our agreements, um, which are still in play. So I'm not going to go over them in great detail. But I, the way that we want to make sure that this space works for everyone. And uh, so our general agreements are a reminder that we're all in this together, including this space tonight. So we're all co-creating this. We all have a responsibility to keep us on track make sure it's working for everyone. So um, we're all kind of co-facilitating whether you signed up for that or not. And uh, you have choice and choices have consequences. So this is a non-coercive space. No one is here to force anyone to do anything, um, but remember that your choices do have consequences. So be mindful of them and um, the outcomes. Uh, we encourage you to lead with curiosity, kindness, patience, compassion, gentleness, um, gentleness. And um, uh, basically, because we have found that that is a more effective way to be with each other, um, it saves a lot of wasted energy in conflict and uh, and uh, um, abrasion. Uh, we also encourage you to listen for understanding, um, both to others and also to yourself. Um, I know for myself, oftentimes words come out of my mouth and afterwards I think, oh, huh, did I think that? Hmm, that's interesting. And uh, so also to speak from your heart, to speak from the experience that's true for you. And remember that other people are can also speak from the heart and have different experiences. And that's also equally true. So both and not either or. Um, we're here to figure out how to put all the pieces together and not to figure out if there are any wrong pieces. All the pieces have a place. And finally, um, we try to have fun. We try to keep it light, find the humor, um, knowing that laughter and humor and humor is a sign of a well-functioning team. So uh, with that in mind, if people can give me, uh, oh, and 
these are uh, these are offered as a proposal. So if you have any concerns, any questions, or and need any additions to the agreements, um, please speak up. If you can live with them, just to keep it quick, you can give me a thumbs up. And if you have anything that you want to question or add, just raise your hand. And I think we're good. All right. So um, the other thing that we did on Monday then was we went through and we gathered our lessons learned. And uh, again, won't go into great detail, but we found this lovely Venn diagram of all of the sort of the specifics seem to cluster into sort of these four big bubbles. And this one over here to the left is really about treating everything as an experiment, uh, an ongoing process, uh, a reminder that things take time and uh, you can't push a rope. Some things develop as they develop. At the heart of it really, I think, is this idea that everything is relationship. Um, rela relationships really are the key to everything. And a reminder that those relationships themselves are fractal. Um, we have relation internal relationships, we have external relationships, or relationships between people and across time. And um, so that's what makes things interesting. So tonight we're gonna do um, three things, one of which is gonna be really quick. Um, the first thing is we're gonna look at resources. What are the resources that we have available to work with? Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is talk about what's the territory that we're working in um, and uh, what, are, uh, what are all the different pieces and parts that we need to be aware of as we start working together. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at our goals. And um, so the first step is really um, a, a kind of a placeholder. Uh, because we want to make sure that we gather our resources, but we feel like we probably have a pretty good list of the resources that we have available. Um, so it's been largely pre-populated, uh, but at any point, if you want to take a look there, and if there are any resources that you know that we have available to work with, please list them, um, add a post-it note, and, um, and let us know what those resources are. The only caveat is this is not a wish list. It's not resources that would be nice to have. It's resources that we actually have access to. Um, we've categorized them into three, or sorry, four broad areas. Um, there's the physical assets that we have, the material assets here on the farm, the land, the structures. Um, there's online resources that we have um, access to. So platforms and uh, uh, technical what do you call this? Infrastructure. Um, and then we have sort of knowledge um, knowledge components, and they come in two flavors. There's the know-how of the processes that we have developed and used use around the, the Lifeboat Academy. And then there's also informative materials that we've developed where we've documented how we want to do things. For a lot of the informative materials, we've added uh, links so that you can click on them if you want to take a look at what they are. And um, uh, like I said, I don't think we're not. I don't want to spend too much time here, but I will pause to see. Does anyone have any questions about the resources or any observations or comments? Anything to add? Doesn't look like it. I'm a little limited when I'm sharing my screen. I can't necessarily see everyone at the same time, but. So uh, great to see everything all in one place like this. You guys have done so much already. Just looking at the resources. We aim to please. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't it's... realize there were links there. That's right. I'm going to. See if there's anything I haven't found yet. Well, and one of our <laughs> mottos is we we probably have that written down somewhere. <laughs> um, so if we if we're looking for somewhere where something might be written down, it's most likely in one of these uh, informative materials. Noted. All right. Well, moving on. Um, finally gotten through all of the preamble, and this is kind of the meat of what we're here to do tonight. Um, 
and uh, I'm going to try to, it's going to get messy. Hopefully it will get messy. That's kind of the goal. And um, I'm going to start with our, the lifeboat compass, which is as we've been working in this, one of the things that's, one of the things that's become really clear is resilience is multifaceted. And uh, there are lots of overlapping areas that we need to attend to for to make to develop our individual and community resilience. And so we've been trying over time to figure out how to make that. And it, it's also a little bit of dog t chasing its tail because any one area that you go into, you quickly find that it connects to the other area. And, you know, for example, food sovereignty, one of the things we know is we need to be able to grow our own food. And that seems like it's really straightforward until you start to get into it. And then you realize, well, growing your own food means you need to know about land stewardship, not just about food growing. And you also need to know about collaboration because you're not going to do it on your own. So uh, the minute you get into one area, you find quickly that you start to link to these other areas. And um, that's just how it is, but it can be kind of confusing and messy. And uh, uh, so we're trying to figure out how we can map that territory of all those different areas in a way that makes it a little easier for people to be able to find where they fit um, and to be able to talk across those interest areas, because not everyone's going to be interested in everything. And that's great. You know, you don't need to be interested in everything as long as we have a way of figuring out how to know where people are coming from. So that's what this activity is all about, is really just kind of fleshing out and going into a little bit more detail, breaking apart some of those, those big bubbles and figuring out what the different components are. And the way we're going to do it is um, mostly through color-coded sticky notes. And there are... Um, Probably the easiest way I'm going to try. I hope this is easy and I'll, I'll see whether or not I may be able to explain it. But there are there's basically bodies of knowledge and they are uh, gathered together into theories, into different conceptual areas of um, know how. And the theory of practice is really what informs the actual practice. So there's a process or a technique that we can use. And then there's the knowledge that, that supports it, why it's important, how it functions, where it fits, when it's useful and when it's not. So there's always, there's usually a high level theory that can be somewhat abstract. And then there are specific tools that come out of it, processes and processes and practices. And then on top of that, we have groups and individuals who are the people who actually know and use and can guide those practices and, and, and that knowledge. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're going to map out what are the different theories of practice that are involved in what we're doing together in the lifeboat and the processes and practices that they point to. And then we're going to see who do we know, groups or individuals who are knowledgeable in those areas or know those practices. Um, because ultimately, if there's something we need to know, we need to know somebody who knows that, if that makes sense. So we started to put it together um, just to give a sort of a sample of what this can look like. Um, so just like our compass, we've got at the heart of it is a model of resilience and regeneration. So the question is, what do we need to know to be able to do that? And um, in our in our compass, we have identified effective collaboration. How do we work together? Sustainable economics, an antidote to the extractive capitalism that we find ourselves in. And that also requires a transition from where we are to where we wanna be. Um, sustainable land stewardship, using the land in a way that actually heals and, uh, and grows the capacity of the land rather than diminishes it. And food sovereignty, which for the purposes of us tonight, it can be sort of food and material sovereignty. So food, and I would say also, you know, how do we how do we keep ourselves fed, sheltered, warm, and safe? And um, 
with those, then we again, this is just a sort of a starting place, is you can imagine that there are subtopics. So under effective collaboration, um, there's how we uh, how we structure ourselves, what are kind of the policies we have, and that's we have sociocracy as a placeholder for that. Um, there's also how do we improve, how do we get better? So how do we create a learning organization or a, you know have an action learning component to it? And then um, what do we do when things don't go right? Um, so what are some restorative practices that we have when tensions arise, which tensions are going to, right? Conflict is inevitable. So if we're going to effectively collaborate, we know that there are at least these three sort of sub areas that we need to be aware of. And then each of these break down into, you know, can have different practices that are um, associated with them. And then I put April on here as, um, April knows a lot about learning organizations and action learning and um, and is good at, I, I know from personal experience, is good at helping us set up sharp, sharp and shiny experiments. So um, that's the main idea and the process that we are proposing to use is if anyone has access to the board that you just start posting post-it notes or uh, sticky notes, I guess is what we call it in Miro to avoid trademark infringement. Um, and uh, so uh, we have some sample post-it notes or some some starter post, uh, sorry, sticky notes uh, off to the side over here. And, um, and, and basically people can just go in and sort of self-serve and start adding things. Um, and if you don't have access to the Miro board, then the alternative is that you can put what you'd like to add in the comments and we can take a, a, we can take care of adding them to the board for you. So a long, lots of me talking, I apologize, but that should come to an end at the, right now. Brad, questions? By comments, do you mean, I mean, I have access to the board, so I can do that. But by comments, do you mean in the chat or is there someplace else on the mirror board for comments? What What do you mean? Um, if you if you don't have access to the mirror board, then in the, the Zoom chat, you can put it and then we'll take uh, we'll take on the mechanical process of getting the sticky book note on the board. Are there any questions? Is it clear? It, Thumbs up if it feels clear and you're willing to start or questions about, about what we're doing. All right, so um, everyone just feel free to start adding either uh, chat uh, if you don't have access to the mirror or right onto the mirror board. Um, and if you have any questions either also about navigating the mirror board, um, you know, just feel free to chime in. And we'll we'll do this. Uh, basically, we, everyone just work on the board, and at some point we'll pause and we'll say, "What what are we noticing? What what are we seeing?" So, off you go. So, are we just looking? For, you're looking for new ideas that relate to those ones on there that we can stick there for further discussion. Is that? It? Yep. Okay. Yep. If there is, it basically it's, we just want, what's the landscape out there? So what are some of the things that we need to be aware of? What are the pools of knowledge that are going to help us do this work better? And the the knowledge keepers who, who can help us do that work better. I have a question. Yeah. Um, do you want us to also do a little arrow thing because that may be a level of technology that i'm not yeah. capable of i can i can demonstrate that and yes you can do the arrow thing so all you need to do is click on the um, sticky note and you'll see the little kind of bluish dots that go on the side when you click one of those as soon as you come over to another one it will automatically attach it and if you want to add a note to what kind of connection that is, if you click on the line, you can just hit the plus, the T plus up there, or plus T, and then and click off of it. Thank you.
What's the name of those? Uh, that's the seed people, the people who bring the equipment and they process your seeds. It's young agrarians. Um, no, or farm, city city farm farm folk. farm folk farm folk city folk. It's a program that's uh, with farm folk city folk. Cool. Thank you. And it's totally okay for this to end up looking like spaghetti. When we want to do the little um, arrow, do we click on link two after we've clicked the three dots and then draw no. the line? No, the, I think the link two is more of like a hyperlink. You can just gotcha. do the dot uh, if you click on it. If you I can. I clicked on the three dots on the right. Oh, okay, maybe on the whole thing. Let me try. If you, if you Can you see food sovereignty, the, the tab? Um, are, that was down below i'm i'm up by um, where are you i'm up i got uh one up next to uh sociocracy all right i and i put the john chenera um you know just as a resource got, so okay so i want to make an arrow from that to the sociocracy you see or, um do you see me clicking on it i see you um yeah i see you there but I don't know uh, how to put an arrow that goes from. Oh, okay. If you if you click if you click on that note, just click on it once, okay. and it'll. Oh, the dot. It. Yeah, the blue dot. Okay, and then I'll. Okay. There you go. Oops. Okay. Blue dot. I don't know. It didn't do it quite the way I thought it should have, but. I can do it. I don't know. There. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's good. Can we get rid of that other weird yeah. arrow that I made? Done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm learning. We all are. It's okay. Yeah. It's a good thing. I feel like I'm looking at tiny organisms under a microscope. Like with <laughs> all the they're all swimming around and there's all these different things happening. One of the uh, the stick the post-its on the side that labels what the color is supposed to be is missing, and I can't yeah. remember. Oh, organize! I can put it back. It's organizations. Okay, thanks.
I love the fact that I have to keep adding um, more post-its, stickies, sticky notes. <laughs> I'm curious if anyone has thoughts on where um, groups like deep adaptation might fit. I'm thinking about deep adaptation or earth regenerators, like these online communities of support that provide resources and connection that are kind of, they, but they span many topics. But I still feel like that's, I don't know. I want to put them in somewhere, I guess. Yeah. It's interesting. It's almost like a, not a topic specific one, but more kind of a clearing house or a... Although I feel like adaptation itself is, I mean, that is a topic like that also makes me think about like bioacoma lafe and people who are really focusing on that way wow. of that framing. So I'm thinking two things. One is, um, well, one is decolonization, um, and so that's that's a I think a separate blue one. But then there's maybe, is there something like maybe just social networking is the, you know, keeping information sharing or uh, net, I don't know. I don't, uh, anyone else have thoughts? I put a decolonization sticker. You know, it's sort of like we have this, the one of the challenges that we have a lot is um, uh, uh, sorry, just have a, a um, because we're doing what we're doing here, but then we're also trying to work with a network of people doing different things in different places. And it makes me think about, it's kind of that, is it, is it's like the connected tissue. And yeah, and that's kind of what culture is because culture is how do we relate to everything? Um. So in that sense, decolonizing is not isn't a topic. It's a changing the way that we relate. It's changing the culture. And that is, you know, that exists in all of these things that we're mm -hmm. putting on the map 
or it can mm -hmm. ideally you know it's like yeah well and deep adaptation is in itself it's kind of it's creating it's looking to create that's the deep adaptation is the new culture right mm -hmm. so Hey, Ben, can you remind me what the difference is between uh, process slash practice and theory of practice, please? Yeah, a, a, a process is something that you can do, and a theory is something you talk about, if that makes any sense. So a theory is a way of making sense of why you would do a particular process. So Regenerative agriculture is a concept, is a theory. So and how then, would you classify soil food web? Is that a practice or a theory of practice? That's a tricky one. I would I would say it's probably more a theory and then there are specific practices underneath it. I would agree. It's a little it's a little on the uh Yeah. And that's, that's how, you know, <laughs> that's, the, that's part of the decolonized way of working is that nothing is, you know, neatly separable from anything else. So. Oh, actually, you know, I saw the farmer health and that made me think of mental health. Which is... Does the person who put climate smart villages mean climate safe villages the project of larry what's his name or is that another term i'm just curious i put that there and i took it from a banner at the bottom of a web uh, page or actually an email address an email that i received so mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to take time to drill in to okay. actually find it was a it was a a it's an organization yeah. that is a that provides a resource for that kind of thing yeah. and that's that's what it was it was climate, it was so climate I could, smart. okay yeah i could put quotes around that maybe and... well it's okay there's another one called climate safe villages that's why oh, okay well it is we... related to what we're doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we could add to that that one or make another we could one? We could. Um, yeah. That's probably a good enough placeholder for both of them for now, I would say, but cool. could cool. be worth it. Yeah, that one. Ben. It's a climate safe. Yeah, there's another one called climate yeah. safe villages. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. It's, you know, one of the reasons why I am excited to be doing this is I get so many references people oh yeah. have you heard about this site oh have you heard about that one and and it's just it's so there's so much and being able to just make sense of you know big picture what are the different areas well i i'm going to be talking some somebody next week who's got a project she's calling um um resiliency neighborhoods you know, mine is resilient communities. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of overlap to all of what we're doing here. So we're, we're not the only ones on the map. Uh, not oh, that yeah. anybody uh, thought we were, but it's encouraging mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of us are thinking in the same directions. Yeah. Well, and yes. And how do we, like, I, I am reaching the upper limit of what I can know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, uh, I, I, I'm sort of at, I'm at capacity. And yeah. so I need to, and I think that's how do we then develop the relationships where I can lean into, I don't need to know it. I just need to know, you know, it. And yeah. I, you know, when do I call you? And, yeah. uh, yeah.
Well, I'm, uh, I think we've been having some good conversation around this already, but I just want to sort of um, call time out and um, sort of have a general look at uh, what people are, like Ronnie was saying, it's almost like watching this, these organisms, this like this ant colony at work. Um, are there any other observations or thoughts? And for this, I'd like to go back to the circle. And um, I'm just going to remind us of the order. April, Cam, Milan, Trisha, I think has left us, Barbara, Brad, Ronnie, and me. And um, you always have the right to pass. And we'll go around once and people can just provide opportunities. And then we'll go around again and we can react to what we're hearing. So um, April, thoughts, observations, et cetera. Um, this is delightfully messy, as it should be. There's an underlying order here that we will discover as we go on, I believe. Um, I'm having a hard time sometimes deciding which area some of the techniques and things are in. Um, but I like it. And as you know, mapping is one of my, well, immersive mapping is one of my joys. So I really like this process. And on to Cameron. Yeah, I was a little late getting on Miro, so I apologize. But now that I'm on, it looks messy in a fun way. Uh, yeah, on to uh, Roland. Uh, I am. I am looking forward to uh, collectively figuring out how to make sense of this. <laughs> so uh, over to Barbara. Yeah, I'm um, delightfully lost in possibility. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just want to swim in this. I, I'm. I, I was initially a little challenged by grasping the the concept, like the direction of what I was tasked with doing here. And um, I guess I, I these days in particular, I feel so devoted to what's practical like what what's operational what can be done and so i'm i'm still looking for that in this and i i get it that it's the green and i get it we're not quite at that phase or that that step yet i think i think that's true and for me it's like okay well what does that mean on the ground at spalding farm mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like what what's what does it mean does it mean like a planting plan or does it mean a you know, talking about what animals are are going to come in this year. So, I'm, I'm I feel a little bit adrift myself, and that's probably also because of my uh, my brain pan's full. It's just full right now, this time of day, of this day. I will. I think I'm passing to Brad, but I'm not positive I think about you that. Are. That's yeah. I remember I was following Barbara. Okay, cool. We're on um, we're on track. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, the only one that I had, I mean, I'm still taking it all in, and there's a lot that we could, you know, we could spend hours on this. I was trying to figure out when when we went to the break where housing and the built environment fit, whether they're land stewardship, mm -hmm. but I think of stewardship as something else. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking that housing and the built environment. You know, it it overlaps a lot of different things, economics uh, and stuff. But because um, I wanted to put in things like, you know, housing co-ops and land land um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I don't know where where it goes or whether it perhaps should be its own category. So that's the thing I think wondering about at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'll put it in. The, I wrote it in the chat so he wouldn't finish, for, wouldn't forget it. So I just sent it so it's in the chat. Yeah. Can can I just jump in? I had the same question, and I I attached it to sustainable land stewardship and mm. su sustainable economics. Yeah, that's and, 
where it seemed the closest. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. ish, but it might be its anyway. Yeah. It might be its own. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz it's a big one. <laughs> Oh, um, who's last? Who are we? Ronnie. Ronnie. There you go, Ronnie. I think um, this already feels it. It's I, I guess it's not possible for it to be mm -hmm. comprehensive because there's always going to be more, but it feels comprehensive. If that makes sense, like it feels like oh, um all of the all of the important pieces are here and um and because i've been part of the lifeboat academy for a while now the um the influences and the practices and the theories and the people who come up over and over again are all here so and we've we've done a lot of different mapping over time and this map is like oh it's all like here but it's categorized and um and it's organized i mean it it may not look organized but it is it is organized and we we know that because we we've been you know engaged in the the building of it so um yeah and i think it is useful to really map out what what are we working with who do we know what do we know what don't we know um, is there anything that seems like it's missing? And I and I second um, Ben's idea of you know when people say, oh, have you heard of such and such? I'm like, okay, here's the map. Like, <laughs> do you see do you see where that might fit in, or do you see if you know maybe that's redundant, or we've considered that already? Just I think this is also a useful tool for sort of um, for really showing the level, the depth of thought and intention and learning that goes in to a project like this over you know the past decade it's a lot a lot of influences and a lot of this stuff too is these these um these people and these organizations and these ideas are on the map because they've been put into practice already there's been testing um there's been a lot of trial of these different ideas this isn't like let's just take everything we know and, and, you know, splash it onto a page. It's like, no, this, these things have been, have been put into practice. So I think that's really cool. Um, in a way, this is also kind of a time, it's a nonlinear timeline of the, of the Lifeboat Academy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different way of, of viewing it. And it's very, uh, like I said, comprehensive. So think it's pretty cool and also it's making my head hurt looking at it <laughs> so there's there's also that yeah over to ben yeah i and i'm with you barbara in terms of um uh ultimately i want it's like how to how does it help like that's and i i want to get i want to keep getting back to like when somebody I've kind of joked about, because I do get so many people saying, oh, have you read this? And have you heard that? And I want to be able to say, like, what would it do for me? You know, it's sort of where where would I apply it? And um, um, and one of the things that we're planning on doing, so it's a work in progress. And and Roland, I see your hand. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll pop over to you. Um, it's, it's a work in progress. And we're going the plan is we're going to dump it into kumu which is i'm just going to hopefully you can see this i'm just switching over in the the share um this is a kumu map and um can can everyone see that Ooh. you won't necessarily see the detail but um it has this really cool functionality where like you can that's just the organizations that are on the map or here are the skills. And then you can kind of like see the skills and the organizations. And um, so the idea is that we do this kind of down and dirty brain dump, and then we put it into Kumu and hopefully it's gonna help us show 
where are these clusters, you know, like, where is it most useful? And my hope is that it ends up working a little bit like a Rolodex or like a Yellow Pages, you know, that, uh, and then and the next, and it is when the rubber hits the road is when it matters, right? When it comes to, okay, so we're gonna build bunkies on the property. How do we pay for it? And how do we do it, right? And where does it go so that it fits in with the landscape? So, you know, it's sort of like when there's something specific to do that it'll help us find those those connections. Um, so that's the hope. And uh, just in terms of process and timing, I thought, okay, so we've all had a chance to share it. We'll go back once, once more around the circle and then we'll jump over to goals. And um, again, this is all kind of raw material that will get processed a bit more. And then the idea is at the charrette, it'll come out again but in a, in a somewhat more refined form, and then it'll be easier to be able to say, oh, I wanna add something here and, and there. So um, we've all had a chance to share once, and now what are, now that you've heard other people's thoughts and reactions, um, you know, do you have any responses? April, back to you. Of course I have responses, and I'm not wanting to lecture again because I get overexcited and then burst out with all this stuff and it's not necessarily useful in this context but just to say that what we are gathering here is raw data and if we don't gather it here we're not able to start using it all or to understand it as a way of making sense of our experience and of what's going on the way that I look at these sort of depictions is that it actually shows us reality or it's closer to reality than it might be otherwise because we start making visible what is invisible otherwise. Stuff that we feel instinctively or intuitively, but actually being able to put it down, to look at it then visually as well and talk about it is hugely um, useful in, in terms of inclusivity and using, you know, seeing and using our resources or having the basis for that. What a lot of my work is around fan, finding patterns in these sort of messy spaghetti linked together, colorful, chaotic looking things. There are always patterns and the patterns help us make sense. Um, and it also allows us to start seeing Ronnie talked about, which was gap analysis, what's missing? What haven't we thought of before? Mm -hmm. Where are our blind spots? It helps to work, work with that, which is really useful. And you can do it in all kinds of ways. And Ben alluded to that with with the um, different different colors that are coding this. It's very easy from this now to take out each set of colors and see what we've got and then put them back in and see what else links to them to isolate it or to um, complexify it, I guess. And that's the fun and the joy and the confusion of it. And if we're not confused after doing this, then I would say that the system and the process isn't working. It's just like therapy. If you don't come out of a therapy session more confused than you walked in, then the therapist isn't doing his or her job or their job. So, um, I swim through this sort of analysis all the time, and there are ways of, of analyzing this, but getting it out there is hugely valuable. And now I'm going to be quiet and pass on to Cameron. It's so funny, April. Every time I, I hear you speak, I can't help but notice how eloquent you are and how differently we speak. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, how to describe what I'm going to say, and I'm thinking of the Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> every day at, uh, at work right now, we dance to the Ghostbusters, and the theme is like, who are you going to call, right? Um, and so I think farming, you know, there's so many things that you plan for, and then so many things that work out or don't. And I always like to have a hit list of like, who are you going to call when it goes down? So who's calling, who are you calling to support you? Who are you calling to plan things out with? And then who are you going to call when it all, when it all crumbles? Um, you know, I called Carly this year in the middle of a uh, garlic harvest because I had a barn collapse and I thought this is the woman and she came and she did a great job. So 
there's the yellow pages aspect of this that I think is good for the Ghostbusters piece. And then the other piece I was thinking of was who's already doing this that we can team up with. So, you know, when I looked at the seed, the seed uh, section with Pascal Poot there, and I know that's one of your superheroes, Roland. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, uh, BC Eco Seed Co-op, and I'm thinking of Seeds of Diversity, folks who are doing huge programs um, that we can join in on, right? Like Seeds of Diversity needs growers. Um, and so there's lots of people who are already really organized in each of these areas. So yeah, this, this is a great tool. Okay, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Um, I just got excited and I think I got a, an aha on the process when uh, Brad and Barbara were talking about things that they had seen. I haven't had a chance to actually look at the board. I was so intent on adding things to it that I haven't really had an opportunity to look at all of the different things. But I think it's actually those kinds of exchanges that this is really about. You know, what are you noticing and what are the gaps and what are the connections? Uh, because I mean, uh, we're we're building it together, so we don't yet have answers. And it's these types of questions that anyway, I got really excited when you were talking together because I thought I, I I realized this is what we're doing. That's all I wanted to say. So over to Barbara. Uh, just uh, feeling really um, nourished by all the wisdom of each of us and also the process. I, I just actually can't keep my eyes off this. I've got two monitors, so I'm looking at it. It's this richness here and, and we're all here. So I'll look over here for the minute, for the moment. I I have so many contacts. I have so much of this data. I just can't get at it like right now in the middle of the moment, you know, to, to actually find this. So I'm I'm hoping that this is um, this isn't a one off, you know, that mm -hmm. we can we can actually continue to uh, populate this because um, yeah, I don't work as fast as some people work. Some people are like on it, in it, doing it done. And I'm more like, oh, yeah, I know I've got that. Like you, Ben, I've got that connection banked somewhere. I just have to go and get it. And I and I don't want to take time to do that. But there is a lot. And I'm. And, it's maybe that's true for other of uh, others of us and people who aren't even here right now as well to continue bringing stuff in um because this is so rich oh my gosh that's all i'm gonna say right now over to you brad okay so i got another uh chat ready to unleash so mm -hmm. i'm again maybe it's there somewhere but um what I have is where's the sociocultural aspect um, that to me is the most crucial factor. I, I think that the effective collaboration and governance are a te technical thing that are really a subset of the bigger sociocultural, psycho, spiritual um, realm that to me is just based on my experience is the, the make it or break it um aspect of anything like this so that that that's even more fundamental than housing <laughs> than my question about housing so that's that's where where my question is right now and i i if i had more time with this i might refine the main categories you know a little differently in along these lines check and that, that leads to who's after me Oh, oh, well, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this question's coming up in different ways. And I think this is also kind of what we, what Ben was talking about with the compass, where the lines start to blur um, because everything's connected and, you know, everything that we're looking at has, is like, is in the realm of culture. It's just diff it's different facets of the of the gem. Um, um, just an anecdote that I really appreciate. So um, Ben talked about the, the Wasanich meet uh, peoples and the word meaning um, emerging people. And it also means emerging land. So yeah. they don't differentiate between land and people, the people in the land 
the people saw the land and the land was, you know, it's like the, there's no people without land. So I'm just thinking about sort of, um, you know, who are you going to call and growing food and tending um, the animals. It's all this same um, thing. And how do we, how do we express that wisdom, that, um, that deep truth and knowledge? And I think, again, these are all sort of facets of that. Um, but I think it's important to name it like you did, Brad, like the, um, the intentional and working with that intentionally in community and how we relate to all of the, how do we relate to the land? How do we relate to each other? How do we relate to spirit? All of these different things. We have to be intentional about it or else we're, we fall into the old patterns. Right. So, um, yeah. And I think, I think those things could, they do, they could fit here in a lot of different, a lot of different spots. Um, yeah. And, um, Yeah, I, I think this is great. I don't have, I mean, like someone said, we could do this for, we could do this for days or longer than that. So <laughs> I think this is very good enough for now, safe enough to try mm -hmm. over to Ben. Yeah, well, and I was, I was just going to say, and it's, you know, part of the advantage of the mirror board is it, it's just here and, um, you know, anyone has the link and can come back anytime and keep adding to it. And, you know, it's part of the intention is that collectively we come back to this a couple more times, you know, in this process, right? Um, that it, hopefully it is a living thing that starts to become that, you know, the Rolodex or the yellow pages. And, um, and I just have to make my pitch though for, you know, my resistance to intentional communities and it's sort of around the culture thing as well is I don't know that we can intentionally create culture, but I think what we can do is engage mindfully in practices that will generate a culture, you know? And um, and I think that that's, but, and I think it's what Ronnie, what you're saying though, and, and that's, and one of the big things that we uncovered in our lessons learned is having your hands in the dirt is part of it. You know, and it's it's the like, how do we literally recenter the land? And then when we when we stay focused on that, when we stay focused on right relationship with each other, with our neighbors, with with, you know, uh, with the land and, and all of our more than human relations, I think the other stuff will sort itself out, you know, but it is but it's back and forth. You know, it's this it's the both and it's the all it's the also and of there's going to be times we want to stand back and talk about it. And then there's also times when it's going to happen because we're not talking about it and we're doing something. So anyhow, very exciting. And I, um, uh, again, it's a living thing and um, it will hopefully uh, continue to grow throughout the process. And for now, um, I want to, the next part is going to be easier, is much easier. It's not nearly as, you know, throwing spaghetti at the wall. And um, because I know it's it's also we're getting close to the end of uh, usable mental energy chunk um, here. So um, and hopefully we have and even if we don't if we don't have enough time to do it tonight, it's OK. We can come back at session three and or in between here and there. And um, and this is, I think, the link to what Barbara's getting at. Like, how does any of this make a difference? When is it useful? And um, what we we are setting up the Lifeboat Academy as, in part, a 10-year experiment in resilience and regeneration. What can we do? How far can we get um, in 10 years? Just as, uh, you know, it's a, big, it's a big round number, and people like big round numbers. Um, and we, as part of our, the, our legal structure, we are encoding eight social benefits that are the core of what we're doing. And we have some long-term goals for each of those. And the job for tonight is how do we convert them into some short-term goals that we can really focus on in the next year. And I'm just gonna walk through quickly those areas. Um, the first one is disseminating practical skills 
So how do you grow food? How do you purify water? How do you preserve food? Um, and uh, in that we see ourselves as an educational facility. So we wanna have as many people as we can really be able to learn the skills in a practical way. So um, our goals are a couple. Uh, one is the 675 guest days a year, which is you know that many people coming to the farm and 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 um, experiencing it. Five off-grade guest cabins, which is by zoning what we're allowed, um, and 150 earnable badges. We've created part of our. Uh, our educational model is a peer-to-peer -peer system where you learn by doing. And so you shadow somebody who does it until you feel comfortable and then they shadow you. And that's how you earn badges. And right now we have something like 100, 100 badges that you could earn. And um, so I rounded up to 150. Um, and actually the big caveat on all of these is this is all proposal. So this is all just a starting place. And then maybe some of the goals are too small and we need to enlarge them. Maybe they're too big. Um, so anyhow, the, in the practical skills, it's really about the capacity and people coming and then walking away with earned badges. Um, we also wanna be modeling um, high functioning collaboration and that's in the same, it's kind of that part of the education. Brad, this goes to that culture, social cultural aspect you know, uh, we want to give people an experience of being in an environment where they can, they honestly are invited into a peer collaboration experience. Um, so again, we have some goals around number of visits and webinars that we can do, and then feedback that we get from people who've participated. Moving down, we also have some uh, sort of uh, biomechanical goals around regenerative agriculture and carbon sequestration. So um, we have some goals around uh, the um, the Ferme de bec in, in Normandy has uh, uh, developed this 60-30-10 garden system that doesn't require outside inputs. Um, we, we have a great opportunity to do silvopasture here and um, uh, carbon sequestration. We want to measure our carbon sequestration and see if we can um, match uh, La Ferme de Becquerois, and um, also Hugo culture demonstration. This is an area we could, we could, you know, come up with some more specific things that we want to demonstrate around regenerative agriculture. Um, we want to, um, uh, in, we want to also bring people into a reconciliation process. And I think this is, it, I know this is a loaded term, but a re-indigenization process. Um, and where people can reestablish their relationship with the land. And um, so one of the goals that, that this is a personal goal that I've thrown in is there's a training I received called uh, 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 Indigenous Tools for Living, which uh, was a fantastic program. And I would love to set a goal of bringing that to a certain number of people. And then um, actually having and featuring Indigenous-led, directed, developed, programs. So we're bringing settler cult, you know, settler people in to have those experiences um, where hopefully there's a transformative experience there. Um, food sovereignty is really the core of what we're doing. Um, it's, it's what gives us focus for all the other stuff. So um, we have some goals around a whole diet for 16 people. Um, so based on sort of average calorie counts and uh, what is considered a reasonable division of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Um, again, this might be, hopefully we can surpass these goals, but this is where we're starting. Um, likewise, uh, we wanna do that as we are healing ecosystem as well. So measuring our biodiversity, and this is another area where we probably can flesh it out some more, where we can get some people who have more knowledge about how to measure bio uh, bio health, uh, the health of ecosystems. Um, and then the last two goals are really around access to land and equity for farmers. Um, so it's about making space available for farmers, both the, the permanent farmer caretakers and visiting farmers or young farmers who might also be able to take advantage of the resources of the property 
and interns. So those are our, you know, kind of high level 10 year goals and the different areas that we're working in. So first, uh, questions for clarification. Are there any questions about either the, the different social benefit areas or some of the goals? I'll pause there. Any questions for clarification? All right, then, um, so the next steps are pretty simple. Um, simple is not the same as easy. So uh, if you, everyone is now invited, same thing. If you have access to the mirror board, grab a sticky note and add a goal. And uh, so you can add goals to the 10 year plan. If you think there are some, you know, uh, like I was saying, way of measuring ecosystem health, and the more to the point, though, is taking those 10 year goals and coming up with what feel like things we could accomplish in the next year. And um, I'm going to say, I know the first question is going to be, what resources do we have to work with? How much, how much should we assume? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, right now, it is looking as though we will have the I'm just going to, at the risk of jinxing it, I think the money is going to come together. Um, and so let's assume that we have the money to purchase the property plus a, a legitimate budget that's say $100,000 for initial infrastructure improvements. Um, and, and beyond that, we also have, um, I think, we can tap into our network for additional material resources if necessary. So um, with that in mind, grab a post-it, uh, sorry, sticky, <laughs> and <laughs> grab a sticky note and start adding goals. And uh, as always, you know, any questions along the way, feel free to chime in. Is there any color coding on the sticky notes? No, they're just colorful notes. So these are just ideas um, nothing they're not going to stick <laughs> there yeah exactly yeah they, they they need to kind of go through a vetting process and that's what we'll do next uh, the next session is actually trying to match the resources and the goals together and with with people with people power If I see a goal that I'm like, mm, that's a bit ambitious, can I put a competing goal next to it? Or not competing, but. Yeah, and you can also, um, I think that would be fair. And you can also add comments to mm -hmm. it. Um, I think either way would be fine. Okay.
No, I just, that red is too shocking. <laughs> Oops. You really have no idea how much joy it gives me to have to create more post-it notes. <laughs> it's like, you know, the sign of a of a good meeting is when you have to get more chairs. Ronnie, do you know how many potlucks we had this summer? No, I didn't actually compile that. Okay. And it'd be hard to know because on the calendar, we had it a bunch of weeks when we just didn't have a potluck. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I had to guess, maybe eight to ten. I just I'm I'm just putting it relative to this year. I think Brad, I, I I think I'm looking at some of your your notes, and just so you know, we are fully sociocratic. Mm -hmm. So we have a, we have a established and integrated sociocratic decision making process, including onboarding. So nice. we're we're kind of ahead of some of your. We've already done some of your goals. Yeah, good, good, good to hear. Yeah, I have some background in that myself, so. Uh, I like it a lot, and I've seen how it can be misused, too, mm. <laughs> or just not used adequately. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've actually, I think that uh, our experience has been, you know, we we struggled with integrating it, and then once we we figured out how to use it then we realized onboarding was a really big yes aspect of that and uh totally yeah yep yeah you've seen some of my you know things there yes those are my although the more reference to sociocracy wasn't me mm -hmm.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. I had a question on there's a one of the, the sticky notes is world with local nations. I think it's probably supposed to be work with under um, integration of indigenous ways of knowing. I just want to double check. Who's, whose note was that? I think that was Cam's. Cam, is that work with? I don't know if Cam is currently okay. nearby. Okay. It is absolutely work with. If you could fix that, that'd be fantastic. I did. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just, I, I just, you know, took the risk. How would one create more post-its? How does that happen? Oh, uh, I can do it really quickly here. Hang on. And using the duplicate function on the dropdown? You can, and there's also, they have these packs. You oh. can just, there. Oh, yeah. Oh. There. So cool. there's a whole whole bunch along the side now. I I have found Miro to be really well designed. Uh, it, it's and, and they're uh, yeah they they've got some cool features. All I'm, right. I'm feeling pretty kaput, so I think I'm going to head out for the evening. But well, this is really. I actually, Hank, if you can give me just a minute, because I think we're probably all pretty kaput. Okay. And um, and I think just uh, having a way of closing up again. The beauty of Miro is that it's always it's always open, so um, we can so actually. What we should do is send out a a thank you to everybody who was on Monday and tonight with a link to the board in case you have any additional thoughts. And um, 
just to uh, give everyone and you can everyone can keep working if you want to but let's um make it acceptable for all of the every, everyone who needs to go to go and just once through for a checkout and uh final thoughts for the good of the cause so um over to you april once again great fun thank you for all the perspectives which keeps me from falling into my pitfalls and blind spots. So I appreciate that and look forward to further work. And I'm going to sign off now. Thanks, everybody. So that's over to Cam. Thanks, April. Um, yeah, that was fun. I like um, when things uh, start to become really tangible. So I like those one year goals. It's really like hands in the dirt kinds of goals. So I think I can echo Barbara on that one, what she said previously. And um, on to you, Roland. I like how um, we're all novice and experts and uh, I appreciate how we weave together and um, it's a horizontal sharing. Uh, over to Barbara. I'm unmuted. Great. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, everybody. I, I, these are what we just did. That's pretty concrete. I'm not even sure they're goals. They're more like, yeah, their actions or maybe, maybe sort of kind of objectives. I love it. And um, looking forward to more. Thanks so much for pulling this together. Everybody that's contributed. Over to Brad. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm appreciating how much of an overlap uh, there is here and what I'm doing in in an earlier stage and uh, where where we are and and I'm appreciating y'all and I'm um, learning a lot. Check. Um, this has been really awesome. I love um, getting to visually see lots of different people's ideas and uh, reflections come together. And uh, it really feels like a, a collaborative vision for the year shaping up. Um, yeah, really exciting. So happy to have been a part of it. Over to Ben. Yeah, I'm very appreciative. I know a number of you were coming in tonight, feeling pretty drained or, or dealing with the uh, uh, some limitations on uh, on the day, and I am really excited by how much we were able to pull out. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you all more as the the process evolves. So uh, stay tuned for more. And I think with that, good night, everyone, and rest up. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Take care.